Jupyter Notebooks are a data scientist's best friend, but if you've never got an instruction on them, it might be a little bit confusing or overwhelming to start working with them at first. So in this video, we will learn what Jupyter Notebooks are, how we can use them, and also some basic functionalities that will be helpful during your data science projects. This video is brought to you by Assembly AI. Assembly AI is a company that is making a state-of-the-art speech-to-text API using deep learning technologies. If you want to go and try it out yourself, you can get a free API token using the link in the description. All right, let's get started. So in front of me is what we call a Jupyter Notebook. So in this notebook, there are a, a bunch of building blocks. I will walk you through all of them, show you how everything works, and also mention some of the critical settings. So uh, what we call the, the main building block of Jupyter Notebooks is a cell. So this is a cell. I can write anything I want in this cell. I can even say, you know, three plus five, and then it will calculate it. In that way, it kind of works like a uh, normal Python uh, function, right? Um, or I can create a variable. I can create another variable. And I can sum these variables up and then it will tell me what it is. Uh, what I'm doing to run these cells is shift enter. So when you press shift enter, it runs that cell. Um, one thing that you might want to pay attention here is that uh, every time I run a cell, only that code in the cell is run. So uh, you might remember if you ever used or uh, written Python code, if you write a, write a Python script, and you run it, the whole script is run from beginning to end. And this is the main difference Jupyter Notebooks have. And the main reason that data scientists use Jupyter Notebooks is because whatever you write in a cell, that's the only thing you run when you just run one cell. The whole notebook is not run. And also you can change the uh, sequence of how things run. So you can run the first cell, you can go ahead and run the fifth cell so on and so forth. So this flexibility is something that is really helpful for data scientists when they're doing their work. As I said, you're basically writing normal Python code. You know, we can create, we can do some mathematical functions or calculations. We can create variables. We can do calculations on them, or we can just use normal Python code. Let's write a classic hello world, for example, and then it will print it for you. Uh, so basically all everything you can do in Python, you can do here and some extra things that I will show you in a second. Um, let's walk through the structure. I'll show you what everything means. So you might realize that uh, sometimes there is a green highlight on a cell, but sometimes there's a blue highlight on a cell. So what they, these mean is if you have a blue highlight, it means that this cell is selected, but you are not yet in editing mode of the cell. So if I type something, you know, it's, it's starting to go into the find and replace mode, but that's not what I want. If I want to change something, I click it again, then it goes into the green mode, which is the editing mode. Then you can edit things. Then you can edit the cell that you have. Uh, you see some numbers next to it. We have the input, which is the cell, and we have the output of the cell right below it. Uh, these numbers tell you when you ran this first. So apparently I ran this third, the cell third, and then after that I ran this one, and then I did some other things, and then sixth I ran this one, and then eighth I ran this one, ninth I ran this one. This tells you when you ran something, and it is helpful because, as I said, you can run the fifth cell and the first and the third and then the fifth after another, and this tells you when you ran uh, what cell you ran in which order, so that if there is something dependent on this cell that affects the output of the eighth one, then you know, oh, I need to run this again before I run this one because if it affects the output of that one. All right, so let's look at some of the settings that we have uh, for the file section of the settings. It's classic, you know, you can save it as something, this file as something else. You can rename it, etc., etc. make a copy. But one important thing is that you can download this notebook as a bunch of different things. Mainly, you will probably need to download it as a Python file if, uh, you know, maybe you're doing some experimentation on a notebook or you're building some sort of code because you're more comfortable with the uh, Jupyter Notebook. But your company or the people that you work for or you, if you're building a project, might need the code at the end as a Python script. And this one makes it really easy to just import it as a Python script. And let me show you why this might be needed. 
So this is the same code, one of them in a Jupyter notebook and one of them is in a Python file. So a Python file looks very straightforward that like we've seen before, you can import libraries, you have the code and it runs from beginning to end. But when you have a Jupyter notebook file, as you can see, the extension is already different. Let me zoom this in, maybe it will be helpful. Um, the extension is already different. So for a Python file, you have .py. And for a, a Jupyter notebook file, you have .ipyynb. So that's a Jupyter notebook file extension. And a Jupyter notebook file looks a little bit different. Well, actually, a lot different than a Python file. So that's why a Python file can be run easily uh, on a terminal, for example, just by calling Python and the name of the file. Whereas a Jupyter Notebook file needs to be run on Jupyter Notebooks and nowhere else it can be read. As you can see, it looks kind of like a JSON file. So that's why occasionally you might need to download it as a Python script. When you download it as a Python script, it will just give you a, a sequential file like the one I showed you, and it will be easier to run for whoever needs it. Next, we have editing. Uh, editing kind of helps us organize the cells a little bit. So if I want to, for example, uh, let's say I select this one, I can hold shift and go down with my arrows and, you know, select these cells. Then I can say, maybe, you know what, I don't want them to be there. I'll say cut cells. And when I select here, I can come and say paste cells above. And now it's going to be pasted above the cell that I, I selected. So this can be sometimes useful if you want to move chunks of code from one place to the other. It's kind of good to know. If you want to add a new cell, what you can do is to either use this plus button here, or if you're at the end of the notebook, as long as you pre press shift and enter, you're going to be adding new cells uh, to be able to add code. So these are two things that could be useful to know. And one other trick is that once a cell is selected with a blue highlight, you know, you know it's selected but not in editing mode, you can press A, that will add cells above it, or you can press B, that will add cells below it. This was something I learned a little bit further into my data science journey and it was actually very helpful. I, I wished I'd known that before. Um, and if you want to delete cells, if even if, ha if it has code or it doesn't have code, it's just empty, you can select this or you can click this uh, cut selected cells button and then it will cut it for you. Uh, sometimes you just need to clean code. There is code that you don't need or just empty cells that are uh, crowding the uh, notebook that you have. All right, um, some other things that are important. So in the cell section of our settings, you can uh, run your cell just through this menu too. As I said, you, can, you normally run it with shift and enter, but you can also choose to run it just saying run the cells or it says cells because run the cells that are selected. So if I select multiple, it, you can be, it becomes cells. You can choose to run the selected cells and uh, the ones below. Um, or you, you run the cells and then select the one below it, and that's how it works. Uh, or you run the cell and insert a new one below it. So these are some things. Or if you have a, a long notebook with a lot of cells and you don't want to go shift, enter, shift, enter, shift, enter the whole time, you can just say run all and it will run all of it for you. Or you can choose to run only the ones that are above the one that you selected or below the one that you selected. Uh, another thing that is useful is cell type. Uh, you can see this one here, but you also have an option for that here. So as you can see, there's a drop down list. It says code. You can also choose markdown and some other options, but I'm going to choose markdown right now to show you. So I'll just select this one. So if I just write code, let's say I'm writing a uh, comment uh, for this code and I will say from now on, I am going into data cleaning. Uh, so if you run it as a code, if the type of this cell block or the cell is code, then it will be seen as a comment. But you can also make it a markdown, and then it will be formatted as a markdown. And once you press shift enter, it becomes a heading. Because if you know a little bit of markdown, you might know if you have only one uh, hash, uh, then you get a heading one, so big heading. And the more hashes you have, add the smaller the heading gets. So that's one thing that you can do. You can also add a list, for example, list item one, 
list item two. And, you know, add some explanations. If you are doing some sort of data cleaning or, I don't know, some data exploration, you can add some information of um, there are 540 missing uh, data points, for example, and add more information that you want to share with the person that you are presenting this notebook to. I will not go into the details of how Markdown works, but if you want to learn um, more about Markdown and how to use it, you can just Google Markdown and there are a lot of nice uh, resources and guides showing you how to use Markdown. Uh, but a couple that I want to show you that I found useful was you can add links to other things. So I can say, I don't know, cats and dogs. Let's say I want to add a link to photos of cats and dogs. Then I will Google cats and dogs. And then I, will, I can take this link and I can paste it here. And now this will be a clickable link once I run the cell. So as you can see, very nice. And then if someone clicks on this, they'll end up at this page. So yeah, uh, that's a nice thing to know. And another nice thing is that you can create sections for your uh, notebook. But I will show you that on the other notebook that I have, um, where we have sections of where we can jump on the notebook itself. So that's coming up. All right, so let's go to the next setting. Now we have kernel. Uh, kernel is the thing that your Jupyter notebook is running on. You might have a bunch of different kernels and each of these kernels can have a different um, set of libraries that is already installed in them, a, couple, a set of different settings that is uh, already set on them. So based on what you want, you might choose a different uh, kernel. So right now I only have a Python 3 kernel and a virtual environment kernel that I set. And in the virtual environment kernel, I have my deep learning libraries installed, whereas for my Python 3 or inside my Python 3 kernel, I only have normal data science libraries uh, installed like pandas and scikit-learn, etc. Um, sometimes you might run into a problem, your kernel might or your cell might be taking a long time to run. What you can do, for example, is to say interrupt. So if my cell is running for a long time and you kind of want to stop it because you found a problem that is causing it to run for a long time, you can say interrupt. Uh, you can also click a button that is here, then it will stop the um, running of the cell and interrupt the kernel. Then it will restart, it will have to, um, you will have to restart and rerun the cell. What else you can do is to restart the kernel. Uh, if you restart the kernel, nothing will happen, it will just uh, restart. So all of the code that you run already will not be run anymore. So if I run this again, it will say one because it will be the first thing that is run, even though the output is still visible. Uh, another thing you can do is to restart and clear all the output. Then you will start with a clean slate um, or you can say restart and run all. So you will restart the kernel and then run everything. Well, I apparently removed the A. Uh, all right, you can shut it down, you can reconnect. So basically those are kind of things that are giving you the chance to restart the the kernel that this notebook is running on in case you run into a problem or something is running for a very long time. And finally, in this section, I already showed you uh, some of the things, but you know, these are kind of easily navigating from one place to the other. If you want to carry one of your cells, you can carry it above or below. Uh, we talked about the adding, we talked about the cutting. Uh, again, if you want to run your notebook, this is one of the options you can use if a notebook, uh, sorry, if a cell uh, to run a cell. And if a cell is running for a very long time, you can use the interrupt or uh, rerun here. And if you want to save your notebook, which you should do once in a while to not lose your um, changes, you can either click this point or little button, or you can say control S as always, and that will save your latest updates on the notebook. All right, so let me show you a more established Jupyter Notebooks to kind of see how everything works in the real world, kind of when you're doing an actual project. So this is a notebook that I used before. Um, it is a project where we try to analyze and build a model on the data that was collected on the taxis of New York City. Um, so a bunch of things that I want to show you. First here is, as I mentioned, uh, you can create clickable links that will send you to different sections of your notebook. So you can see here I have a table of contents and if I click one of them, it will send me to the relevant section immediately. And if I click back to top, 
it will send me back the table of contents. So how we do that is basically very similar to uh, how we did the uh, clickable links, the URLs. You basically do the same thing like that you did with the URL, uh, with the brackets, but then you add the ID of the section that you want to go to with a hash at the beginning. And how we create the ID of a section is by doing this. You basically assign an ID to it. So I do that also for the sections. Then I, you know, add them an ID. So for the first one, I add the ID imports. So then if I run this and I run that, then I click the import library section, it will immediately send me to this one. And for going back to top, I um, link it back to the table of contents section. But apart from all the structuring and everything, basically Jupyter Notebooks are any other Python script. The only difference, as I said, is that you can run your code in different chunks. So, you know, you can import your libraries here, you can um, import your data set, you can visualize your data set using pandas, and it is actually very easy to uh, visualize data sets, especially when you read it in a pandas data frame. You can, you know, basically show it like, as a table, even if you have a gigantic table, it is very easy to see using the head function of uh, pandas, but only showing the first five data points. Uh, it is. It makes it very easy to use for anyone who doesn't even have any experience with code to uh, use Jupyter Notebooks. You know, if you want to present something to your manager, to your boss, um, if you want to present your findings on a piece of data, it is. This is a very nice way of putting it in front of them. Another nice thing about Jupyter Notebooks is that uh, having inline visualizations, you can basically, you know, if you have a Python script, you will probably have to run the whole thing without any errors to be able to see the visualizations. Whereas with Jupyter Notebooks, you can just see or show the visualizations uh, in between code. So, you know, I have some code up until now, imported libraries, imported my data set, and then you know, showed my data set in a table format. And now I am showing it in a visualization. I am showing the histograms of my different columns. If I want to see the, if there are any outliers in my data set, I can easily do that here. So these little things add a lot of value, a lot of flexibility to Jupyter Notebooks for data scientists. One other nice trick with Jupyter Notebooks uh, on top of all of this is that you can install libraries uh, inside Jupyter Notebooks without having to leave Jupyter Notebooks. So, you know, how you normally install libraries is pip install, let's say I want to install pandas, right? You have to run this command in a uh, terminal. But if you want to install it without leaving Jupyter Notebooks, all you have to do is add an exclamation point at the beginning of this line and run it. I mean, because I already have pandas on my computer, it's going to tell me the requirement is already satisfied. But if you want to install something, this is the way to do it on Jupyter Notebooks. And that's it about Jupyter Notebooks. This is all the basic functionality that you need to know to start using them. They are very versatile, very flexible, and very easy to use, even for beginners. And that's why data scientists love them. But what do you think about Jupyter Notebooks? We would love to hear that in the comments section below. Thanks for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you liked it, don't forget to give us a like and maybe even subscribe to be one of the first people to know when we publish a new video. If you have any questions or comments, we would love to hear them in the comment section. And once again, don't forget to go grab your free API token for Assembly AI using the link in the description. Thanks for watching again and I'll see you in the next video.